going to start reading in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I appreciate Brother uh, Greg and Brother James. Uh, we'll be ministering in the services on Sunday. So you be here and you just get behind them and, and they'll do a great job. The Lord will use them in ministry uh, this, this uh, weekend. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. And uh, verse number 5, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. I've been thinking and meditating a lot in the last few days about the importance of, of faith active in our life. And... Uh, uh, as I was going through some of these scriptures, I, I, I noticed the, that really the value of, uh, of understanding that faith and the mind of Christ and how that, that, uh, how that we are led into a, uh, a stronger active faith by allowing our mind to be developed to that place that we, we have the mind of Christ. You know... Um, it, it starts with with uh, with knowledge. Um, I I know that whenever uh, whenever I was a, a young kid growing up at home, uh, it was very clear that my mom and dad were they were in charge. They were the authorities in the home, and um, and so that that uh, home that I grew up in, I I come to believe that. That was the, the norm. That was the way that everybody lived. But then as I got a little older and I would visit other places, other people's homes, I realized people don't live like that everywhere. I remember the first time that I visited family where the husband and wife screamed and yelled at each other. I, I never, I'm sure my mom and dad have disagreements, but it was never any of this screaming and yelling and throwing things and and I was I, I just a kid but I remember being in this home and this wife and husband yelling at one another and screaming and I I guess I probably was a little bit uh, afraid in that kind of a, a, a of a, an environment because I my knowledge was of a home that was a lot different than that and uh, you see knowledge is the beginning of our faith. That's where we begin in developing of our faith. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. We are to live in such a way that, that our thinking, as a believer, our thinking becomes uh, just like Christ. We submit ourselves to him, just like a child submits or should submit in his family to the leadership and the authority in his family, so do we, when it comes to our relationship with the Lord, we yield to him and we develop then the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. We become like him. We, be, we begin to, to think the way that he does. That's the reason why that many times that... Uh, People will say about a son or a daughter, they're just like their dad, or they're just like their mother. They just, they just, they have so many of the attributes, so many of the qualities of their parent because they have lived under that, that leadership and under that, that thinking, that mentality that's in the household. And if you want to have the mind of Christ, the scripture says that, that he made a, himself no reputation. He yielded, he submitted himself uh, to, uh, uh, to be fashioned as a man, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, 
even the death of the cross. And so it begins with knowledge, a knowledge of God, a knowledge of the things of God, and then a willingness to submit yourself to him. That's what Jesus did. Jesus yielded, and as he yielded, and as we yield to the Lord, and to, the, to that kind of a mentality, then we are going to have the mind of Christ. And that is so necessary if, if we are to develop and to strengthen our faith in the Lord. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. The things of God. Are, you know, when you are not converted, when you are not born again, then the, the things of God you don't understand. You, don't un, you can't even comprehend them. You don't have the mind of, uh, of Christ, and so you don't understand about the things of God. And you've seen that in people who are, who are unsaved, that they think about the Bible, they think about church and the uh, spiritual things that are common knowledge to you, but but those unconverted, they don't understand it. They can't even comprehend it. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned or understood. You have to come into that place which you, you have the, the knowledge and the understanding and a, a willingness to submit to the Lord. And then you have... You can, you're moving into the, the mind of Christ. Verse 16, it says, For who hath known the mind of Christ, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We think like him. It's really uh, been something that's been on my mind lately. I've mentioned it in recent services about the importance of thinking biblically. Because, let's face it, there's, there are so many uh, avenues of information that come our way everywhere you look from radio uh, all kinds of, of, of media television and movies and and uh, the internet and just about everywhere you turn there's this onslaught of information that's coming from the world and about 99.9 percent .9 of it is certainly not the knowledge of the things of God much of it is contrary to the knowledge of God. And so if you yield to that and you submit to that, then that becomes the avenue. That becomes the way that you think. You, you have that kind of a mind. But if you are a person who have, you've come to the knowledge of the Lord, you've been saved, you've been born again, and you are, you are into the things of God, into the word of God, then you will begin to think biblically. You'll think with that as the basis of, of your 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 understanding, and you will you're you're moving in uh, to this important place of having the mind of Christ. The warning there in Second Thessalonians, we read this a couple of weeks ago. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse two, talking about those who would who would give misinformation about the end time and about the coming of the Lord. It says, "Don't be soon shaken in mind or troubled." You listen to the wrong information long enough, and it's going to it's going to affect your thinking, your mentality, and it's certainly uh, you're you're going to be struggling even in your faith. Now, how important is this to develop it, to the development of our our faith in God? Oh, it's so essential. It's so essential that you you be a person that your mind is saturated with spiritual things and spiritual knowledge and the Word of God, and you you're filled up with all of these 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 things instead of the things of this world that can rob you of your faith. Amen. You can be strengthened in the things of the Lord, and you can become a person who begins to you will think biblically, and the world don't understand it. I think you all know that we're all surrounded now with everybody else is, sing, is selling legally selling liquor now all around us, Corbin and Manchester and now yesterday, Somerset. And uh, someone posted some things online about these crazy preachers in London. These crazy preachers, they ruined our city. That's what they said. 
And they really believe that. They believe that because we didn't go the, the way that everybody else was going, that, that, uh, that, that you know, we've, we've done damage to our community and destroyed our, our community. That's their thinking. That's their thinking. On the other hand, we're, th- we're thinking a lot differently about that. We're thinking, thank God that with all this that's going on around us, at least our community has been preserved from this uh, directly. And I know people can drive just a short distance and, and buy it, but we're not buying it next door to the church or down the street. It's, it's not right here on, on top of us. And, but it, it just as uh, an illustration of how people think in the world. So opposite. When you hear politicians and people uh, talking about what they believe and, and it's so opposite of the things of God and you wonder, how can they believe that? It's because their mind is clouded and they, have, they are not thinking biblically. And so we need to be a, a people in the word of God, not soon shaken. The word there means not, not destroyed or toppled over. In, in our faith, but our faith is strong because we're a person of the word. Our mind, we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And you know, the mind is really where the activity, it's where the, the, the ability is. It's in the mind. We've illustrated this before from um, Johnny Erickson Tata, the lady that's been in a wheelchair for 40 years now. And, uh, before she was injured, she was a very capable artist and painted all types of beautiful pictures. And that ability was not in her hands. That ability was in her mind, wasn't it? Because even though she can't use her hands to do it, she puts those lead uh, pencils in her mouth and she paints, or she sketches rather, charcoal sketches and pencil sketches. Some of the most beautiful, I think she paints as well. Uh, some of the most beautiful pictures. The ability was in the mind. It was not in her hands. Amen. And that's where the strength and the ability of, uh, of uh, that's how faith is developed in our life. As we are a people of the, of the word, we have the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the word of God. And we're living under his uh, his dominion, we have yielded ourselves and submitted ourselves just like Jesus did, who humbled himself and took upon the, the form of a servant. That's what we are to do. We are to have the knowledge of God and then yield ourselves to the Lord. And this is, is the, the pathway to strengthening and increasing our faith. I, I don't want to be caught up in uh, the, the thinking uh, of the world, and we're warned about that in in the, the scripture, Romans chapter twelve verse two. Be not conformed to this world. Don't be like the world. Don't let your mind be shaped to think like the world thinks. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. The word is is uh, comes from a Greek word metamorph which we get our word metamorphosis just like that butterfly who finally is able to break out of the cocoon and then he's he's changed and he is he is beautiful that's exactly what it's describing don't be shaped or formed to identify with the world but instead be transformed by the renewing of your mind that's where the change takes place the ability is there. That's where faith uh, is, is strengthened as we are thinking uh, biblically. So we really need to put forth a real effort as a people who are into the word of God. That we not only, as Don Pinson suggested the other day, that we are regularly reading it, but we need to take it even a step further than just the reading of the word. And we need to allow that word of God to become a part of us. We need to, we need to not only read it, but we need to, to meditate on it. We need to put it in our heart and hide it in our heart and allow it to wash our mind and to free us from all the thinking and the philosophies of this world so that we can have the mind of Christ. And think not like the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you have a renewing of the mind... 
It says that you may prove or put to test what is good accept, and acceptable and perfect. The perfect will of God. You'll be able then to discern and to determine the will of God and the plan of God because you have allowed God by His Spirit to transform your mind. Amen. Glory to God. You can, you can develop that in your life and come to the place that you are, you are full of faith. Your faith gets stronger and stronger because you put your confidence and your faith in God. And then you're able to believe God's word. You're able to believe uh, when you have faith, you're able to, to do things that you could have never had accomplished before because you're strong in the faith. Sunday night we were talking about the shield of faith so that all of these fiery darts of the enemy will not be able to destroy you. Above all, the shield of faith. We need to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to develop. And I know that I, I must do this by submitting myself to the Lord and to his word and to the, and to the things of God so that I can begin to think biblically. Amen. Thinking like we should in a world. It's hard to do because the world, there's all these things pressing against you. All these different ideas and the philosophies of the world that are constantly coming against us. But you can have the mind of Christ in the middle of all this mess that we're in. Amen. Now, if I had cable TV, I would be addicted to Fox News. That's why I do not have it. Because I know, I mean, that, that kind of thing just sucks me right in. I want to know what's going on in the world, and I know enough to, to get me in trouble most of the time. Uh, but it would just it would just grab me because there's certain there's this this the things of this world. My, there's an attraction there. If you're not careful, it affects your mind, and you are you you are you are pressed into the mold and the thinking of the world instead of being transformed by the renewing of your mind, and that renewing takes place. By your constant exposure to the truth. Amen. Constantly exposing yourself to the truth. Not only at church but at home. And, and continually taking advantage of opportunities. Uh, to, uh, uh, to let the word of God become a part of you. Amen. And whenever that happens then you, you can believe. God for big things. In these last days. You can believe that God will answer prayer. You can believe that God will be faithful to his word and he'll perform it. You'll believe and you'll have your faith will be strong because you have yielded to this. This, uh, this is a, a kingdom mentality. We don't think like the world. We don't, uh, you know, we don't even uh, discern like the world does. But we, we, we have been affected by the power of God, the power of the Spirit. And we have, a, we have a kingdom mentality that says all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. We are, our trust and, and our confidence is in the Lord. You know, if, if, if you allow yourself to, to take in all the thinking, the philosophies of this world, you're going you're gonna to find yourself defeated. Your faith is going to be weak. You're, you're going to be struggling uh, in, in your faith. And the best of us, it can happen to the best of us, that we can, just get, we can just get beaten down by the cares of life and all these things that are around us. Instead, we should be a people of faith, confidence. Amen. The great uh, reformer, uh, Martin Luther, he had a terrible time with discouragement and uh, depression. He would go down into the like the basement of his home and stay there for days in, 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 the, in the dark. And you'd think, these, these great men of faith that did so much, they, they never had any battles like I have. Oh, yeah, they did. And he struggled with depression and discouragement. And uh, even to the, to, the, to the place that one time his wife got tired of it, she put on a funeral, her funeral attire, and went down into the basement and she said to him, who is, who is dead? Is God dead? Then why must you live as though he is? And that shook him out of that unbelief. <laughs> got him out of the basement and got him back to, to uh, let me tell you, you can listen to the wrong things, the, long, the wrong words. 
Amen. I've, I've had one phone call early in the morning before that's just about ruined my day. Just get one phone call and it just wham, just something that deflates you and discourages you and it, it just about knocks the props out from under you. Discouragement. Doesn't have to be that way. Amen. That's why you need to start your day with the word of God in the presence of God and allow God uh, to begin to, to work in you that your mind will not be uh, corrupted by all the things of this world and then your faith can be strong. I love the, the account of, uh, of Jabez. Do you know that that, that book that was written, uh, uh, Jabez, there's only two verses uh, that, that even talk about Jabez, but, but Wilkinson, Bruce Wilkinson wrote that, that, that entire book and based upon just two verses of scripture and upon this, this almost unknown guy, Jabez, but he come out of a bad situation. He came out of a, a situation that was, that was hopelessness. Uh, his, his mother bare him in sorrow and that was, that was his name. She gave him that, that name. Uh, and uh, so it, he started off with a, a hopeless type situation in his life. But the next verse, verse 10 of First Chronicles chapter 4, it says that Jabez began to call on the God of Israel and said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my border, that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it be not to my sorrow. And God granted him that which he requested. Amen. He just pulled up out of that hopeless, despairing situation and called on God and believed God. And God brought him out of that and God began to, to use him and expanded his life and expanded his borders and used him in a wonderful way. So if you've ever asked the question or even prayed the prayer, Lord, would you increase my faith? If you're asking that prayer, then it needs to... It need, you need to back up just a little bit and realize that if, if you're going to live in that kingdom of great faith, then you're going to have to have the knowledge of the Lord. You're going to have to live in, under the kingdom and under the, 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 the rulership and the dominion of the Lord. You're going to have to have the knowledge of the Lord. And you're going to have to be willing to submit to him in that part of your life. And then God will begin to, to work in your mind and renew your mind, set you free from all of the philosophy of this world and the thinking of this world, then you can start to begin to believe God for, for great and marvelous things. Amen. Wonderful things uh, that God can do. Amen. There's nothing that's too hard for the Lord. We need to expect God to do wonderful things. But if, if your mind is all filled with all this hopelessness and all this negativity and all the philosophy and the thinking of the world your your faith is going to be struggling increase your faith amen you know put some action into it some activity into it get in get in the word of god and begin to yield yourself to the things of god and the word of god then you can see god do some wonderful mighty things you know what happens if you get out and work do something that you don't normally do you wake up the next morning and You'll be your muscles and your back or your arm. You'll be sore and hurting because you don't normally do that. You know, we need some spiritual exercises like that. We need some rem reminders in the next few days that, that, that we've been stepping out and trying and believing God for some things that we've never, we've never ever attempted before. Amen. Stretch some spiritual muscles so that you can do something for God. Through faith and by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith and the mind of Christ. That's where, it, that's where it all begins. How are you thinking? Is your mind saturated with the truth of the word of God? Filled up with the things of God? Or are you allowing the thinking and the philosophy of this world to influence you? Amen. If you're, you're, if you're constantly filling your life up with the things of this world... And you're going to have a lot of trouble demonstrating any faith at all. Amen. Amen.
So don't li listen to all those dissenting voices or all those negative voices. Turn away from that and get back to the Word of God. Amen. Begin to think biblically. Get the mind of Christ, the ability of Christ as you yield yourself uh, to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I just pray for every individual here in this service tonight. Lord, it's so easy, so easy for us to just drift into the thinking and the, the ways of this world. But Lord, help us tonight to be renewed in our minds, to be renewed in our minds by the Word of God, by the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, let there be a renewing. Let us be changed so that we will be able to be active in our faith, confident in our faith, believing that you can do great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, help us to not take on the thinking of this world. It's just a hopeless world that we're living in. Help us to live in that kingdom, that dominion, Lord, whereby we have the knowledge of God and we are yielded to the Lord so that we can enter into a new step, a new level of faith. Hallelujah. To do greater things, to see greater things, Lord, as we have yielded to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why don't we stand together?